Ladies and gentlemen, you know that we are in the Shemitah year still. And um, I placed a video up the other day about the harbinger. I believe that the Lord was using that rabbi. I'm not saying I'm promoting that rabbi as a prophet. I believe that the Lord was using that rabbi to warn about the prophetic times that we're living in. Because if you think about it, every stock market crash we've had has always been down 7%. And it's always been like, um, it's always been in September uh, centered on a Jewish holiday. Centered around a Jewish holiday in September. And what's interesting is, is that each, the Bible um, prophesied this and prophesied the day and the hour that these economic events would happen. Now, we've had a fall, the, the Great Recession, you remember back in 2008, when not only the stock market crashed, the housing market, the job market, everything was bad. 2001, the housing market cr um, crashed. We know that, the stock market too. 94, same thing, 87, and so forth. What was ironic is that this last stock market crash that we had was that, I think it was this last one, I'm going to try to find a few. I think it said the Dow Jones was down 777 points, one second. Um... I have to find that for you. And then I'm going to show you something that's the latest. Okay. Here's what's astonishing. Okay. In 2008, when we had the stock market crash, and I'm going to show you an article on that. Look at this. U.S. stock hammered after house rejects rescues. 2008. The stock market went down 777 points. That is God's number, ladies and gentlemen. And that's not coincidental. That's Bible prophecy. Now, what I want to explain to you guys is that financial analysts cannot understand why the stock market was down 777 points. It's the worst drop on record. And check this out. $700 billion financial bailout package they try to come out with. Seven, God's number. Okay? These are prophetic times we are living in, ladies and gentlemen. Here's what I want to show you now. Every, in September 17th was when the stock market crashed. 17th? That's about six days, I believe, before, um, it's a Jewish holiday in September. I forgot the name of it. But there's a Jewish holiday in September. Let's find out what that is real quick. There's a point to all of this because there's there's something I need to show you that's quite as quite astonishing. Okay, in September 14 is Yom Kippur, so the stock market fell in 2008. 700 crashed. Um, a few days. It was what September 11. I think I told you guys or September 17, something like that. It was a few days after Yom Kippur. And it was just Sukkot, the holiday. See? Here. You got Rosh Hashanah coming up and stuff like that too. But anyway, what I want to explain to you guys, let's see how much the, the stock market crashed in 2001. Look at this. This is truly astonishing. Okay? We already talked about 2001. The Times reported that, that the, the stock market, okay, was down at its lowest. It was shut, shut almost by a week. The stock market dropped by 6%. It was down 648 points. You see that? 
And then in 2008, it was down 777 points. That's a difference of uh, 96 points, I want to say. And now the stock market is down a thousand points. Do you see where I'm going with this? I'm going to take you to that article. And they don't talk about this on the mainstream media news. They're not telling you this. They're, they're lying to you through their teeth and they're giving you false numbers. Watch this. I'm going to try to make this full screen if I can. And I'm going to try to get you to hear it. I'm going to stop this here. Now, they're not talking about this on the mainstream media news. You guys need to get that. Okay? They are not talking about this. Now, how they got 500 points, okay, was because the Dow Jones Industrial, Industrial closed at season's lows off nearly 500 points. And in the correction territory for the first time since 2011, as all blue chips decline. The last time the index closed more than 500 points lower was 500 or August 10, 2011. The S&P fell 500 points. I mean, you guys need to understand this. This is not good. And then oil is at $40.45 a barrel when oil is not supposed to be the price that it is. It's like 3 to $4 a gallon, even more than that. That's not supposed to be happening. That, there's something wrong with these numbers, ladies and gentlemen. I've been telling y'all that they've been manipulating the numbers since um, they've been manipulating the numbers, right? Hold on one second. Making you think that everything is okay, and it's not. We are in the Shemitah year. I'm going to tell you something real quick. Okay? So you guys can get it. Look at this. Dow Jones finishes above 1,000. That's not true, ladies and gentlemen. Dow Jones plunges 531 points. That's where you get the 1,000 from. Okay? It lost 1,000 points for the week. Three reasons why the Dow Jones Industrial dropped. Here's another article. The Dow Jones is down, lost 500 points in a week. Twice. That's where the 1,000 points comes from. Sorry with these little ridiculous distractions. Let me show you this. Global stocks sold off Friday with the Dow Jones Industrial Average plummeting more than 500 points in its ninth biggest point drop ever. To lose 1,000 points for the week. Look at that. U.S. stocks closed sharply clo lower following violating trade in Asia and, and Europe after China. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you can Google this for yourself. Um, I'm just showing you this information so you can understand that this is what the Shemitah year is. And I know that you guys have um, 
I know that you guys have, as you know what the Shemitah year is, okay? It is a seven-year cycle, with, and what's supposed to happen in that seven-year cycle is that nations that are rebelling against God, they're supposed to, it's a time for them to come to repentance. So each Shemitah year that rolls around, if the nation doesn't come to repentance, another warning is issued. So God starts to strip the blessings of that nation. The seventh year that rolls around, and each each year you have to understand, it expects everything. Your food, your economic status, a nation's status in the world, economic, everything it affects. In these time periods, nations rise, nations fall. Look at the Harbinger video that I put up, and it'll explain it in greater detail. You have to understand that these are prophetic times that we're living in. And this seventh year that we have coming up, that's going to end the Shemitah year, I believe. This year right here is going to be a very pivotal time because every Shemitah year in America, there's always been some kind, every, every seven year cycle, I'm sorry, in that seven year cycle, every year, and that's, in that seven year cycle, there's always been an economic crash. So we have another one coming. When that's going to happen, that's going to be on the Lord's appointed time. I just know that the Lord told me that this nation had until September 7th to, to um, I gave you what the deadline was before. This nation had until September 7th where the old government had to be removed. The new government had to be put in place that will, and a, a new government had to give its servitude to God. That God was still going to chastise this nation, but the old nation, the old government had to be removed. That means Obama and all of them. And like I told y'all, I believe God's using Obama to judge this nation. I believe so. Okay? But God said if this nation wanted to still, this nation, even though this nation technically is done because of the government, God said that this nation had to um, strip off the old man and be renewed in the new mess. In other words, get the old government had to be stripped away along with the Obama administration, all of them, and then the new government had to be right with God. I'm talking about the old, uh, right with God in God's eyes, including obeying the Lord's statutes both in the Old and New Testament. Okay? The Lord said it had until the 7th. If, and also in addition to that deadline, that those that are not right with the Lord, because this nation's already done. I'm just trying to explain this to you the best that I can. Those that are not right with the Lord had until the 7th to get right with the Lord. It's not that, let me rephrase it. It's not that you, you, you don't have a chance to repent. In other words, When I say that you have until the 7th to get right with the Lord, it doesn't mean you don't have a chance after the 7th of September. What I'm saying is, is that you don't want to see your blessings stripped. You know what I'm saying? You, you don't want to, to see your blessings stripped. So if you are not right with God yet, just get right with God. So that way, when the stuff hits the fan with this country, you don't have to partake in the, in the judgment that they're going to be in the, that they're going to be seeing. You don't have to partake in the curses that, that that's going to be placed on this nation. That's already on this nation. So I'm just trying to correct what I'm saying. I'm going to say it again. When I say you have until the 7th of September to get right with God, it doesn't mean that, let's say, if it's after September 7th, you haven't blasphemed God yet, but you ain't right with God, it doesn't mean you still don't have a chance. It just means that if you don't get right with God by the 7th, you're going to see hardships in your life that this nation's going to see. You're going to see hard, very difficult hardships like that. Okay? But if you want to be protected from that, and you don't want to see the hardship that this nation's going to see, Lord's saying you have until the seventh to get right with him. Otherwise, you will see the hardships this nation's going to have, and you will be tried and tested more than ever before because you did not hearken unto the servants of God that are telling you, to get right with God before the Shemitah year is out. Because if you don't, and let's say you haven't blasphemed God yet, you're going to see those hardships, okay? Until you, as an individual, cry out to the Lord Jesus Christ, confess your sins, repent of it, go through the correction so they could be 
washed away by the blood of a lamb. So again, it's not that you don't ever have a chance. You always have a chance to come to repentance. The reason why I'm telling you to come to God and cry out to Him by the seventh, so you don't have to see those hardships that this nation's going to see. They're going to see more hardships. Okay? So that way you could be protected from that and be covered by the blood of the Lamb. Amen? But if you don't come to God by the seventh, you're going to see those hardships this nation's going to see, and you're going to see them until you cry out to God, go through your correction, confess your sins, so those sins could be washed away by the blood of the Lamb. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what the Shemitah year is. This country has the blessings already stripped. I told you that. This curse is being placed on this nation. And more curses are coming. This nation is cursed, period. This nation's, all blessings on this nation's have been hereby stripped, the Lord Jesus Christ told me. The Lord Jesus Christ told me that the droughts are going to increase. The Lord Jesus Christ has taken his hedge of protection off this country. He has given the military might to Russia. He has given the economic might to Japan or um, China and all of the enemies of the United States. This country is weak. It's, it's being broken apart from the inside out, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just trying to make you understand the pivotal times that we are living in. Because this is the Shemitah year. There's no coincidence. We are in the calm before the storm. Every Shemitah year, when, there's, when it's before economic disaster, the Dow Jones always starts to go crazy and lose so many points. Every year it never fails. And then an economic disaster hits. But this economic disaster coming upon this nation, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be worse than the other seven that we've seen. The other six, I'm sorry, that we've seen. Well, worse than all the others that we've seen, ladies and gentlemen. You don't want to be around to see this. You want to be covered by the blood of the Lamb. Look, we as saints are going to see a lot of suffering. We're going to see it. And we have to be ready and prepared for anything. So my ministry is supposed to help you to prepare for what's to come. This is a very urgent broadcast, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not trying to scare y'all. I'm not trying to put fear in you. The only fear I want to put in you is the fear of God. These are very pivotal times. A thousand points the Dow Jones lost in a week. That's more than 2008. Y'all need to understand that. In 2008... We was down 777 points. I showed it to you, and then the market crashed. They are manipulating the numbers, ladies and gentlemen. The economy's not doing good. We are down 1,000 points in a week, and that's not good. That's not good. And the oil is $40.45 a barrel. Theoretically, it should be a dollar something a barrel. Because back in 2001, I remember the oil being that low, $40, $45, a, $40 a barrel, 20 to 40 and it was always a dollar something, it was always under $2, so why is, the, is, the, is it now three something, four something in some, in some states? They're manipulating the numbers, just like the job market, over 50% of Americans are out of work. That doesn't even take into equation those that stop looking for work. You know how the labor board gets their numbers? They get the employment, unemployment rate based on those that actually file claims, un on claims for unemployment benefits. That's how they get their numbers. But what about those that ran out of unemployment benefits? Or what about those that stop applying for unemployment? Or what about those that are denied unemployment? What about those numbers? They're not counting those numbers in, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Shemitah year. I urge you to check out that video that I put up earlier. And you will see that this is not coincidental. This is the hand of God judging this nation. The blessings on this nation are stripped. And this nation is accursed for turning their back on my father. 
It was the hands of God that built this nation from the ground up. And it was the hands of God that found this nation. And it's the very hand of God that's going to take this nation down. You don't know the kind of God you're messing with. You don't know who you're dealing with. And God's going to show you soon enough, America.